The Taiwan Bee Shrimp, Pollinators of the Deep. No, that's that's not right. The Bee of the Sea. No, no, no. The only bee named after a shrimp. No, no. Is this is this some kind of joke to you? What am I paying you for, Carl? Caradina cantonensis, otherwise known as the bee shrimp, is a species of small freshwater shrimp that belong to the Atiidae family. This family of shrimp is known as the true shrimp because they are really small. Many other animals with similar names, like mud shrimp and boxer shrimp, are not actually true shrimp. They have just evolved similar features. Friggin' posers. Bee shrimp are decapods, meaning they have ten legs. Although, these should probably count as arms. Does that mean we have four legs? Look at this guy. Who else eats with their legs? Oh, oh, stop it, Carl. The bee shrimp is said to be native to Taiwan, hence the obvious name. However, it has been found in the wild parts of Vietnam, Southeast China, and Hong Kong. Quite the seasoned travelers these guys are. So why did they die when I had them in my trunk? Living naturally in small freshwater rivers or streams, they like a relatively slow-moving water flow as they are not the strongest swimmers. They must prefer diving, or perhaps a quick match of water polo. Caradina cantonensis is considered endangered in their natural habitats due to pollution, human development causing habitat fragmentation, and even the aquarium trade. Wait, what? Taiwan bee shrimp are one of the most popular shrimp to keep as aquarium pets due to their vibrant colors and wide variation of patterns that have been selectively bred for. I personally like white bread, but I've heard a good rye bread is nothing to scoff at. In Taiwan and other areas with appropriate climates, shrimp farms have been built to supply bee shrimp, among others including neocaridina and tiger shrimp, in much larger quantities in order to meet demand. However, they are more difficult to farm than other types of shrimp due to their specific needs and sensitivity to parameter changes, much like artichokes. Their long-term health depends on being raised in clean, soft, or acidic water that closely matches the pH and TDS of their native streams. While easy for us to create in small glass aquariums, it is much harder to maintain in the cesspools they breed import shrimp in. Support your fellow hobbyists and always buy locally bred. Bob must not shop. Dwarf shrimp like the Taiwan bee are considered detritivores. Being a combination of the word detritus, meaning waste or debris, and the suffix vor, meaning one that eats, so a detritivore literally eats shit. They also graze on small pieces of decayed vegetation and biofilm or algae. In the wild, a wide array of orgasms, I mean organisms, will fall into the murky depths where the bee shrimp lies in wait for it to decay a little. This includes, but is not limited to, leaves, fruit, dead plants, and wood, as well as the odd dead animal. In our aquariums, this allows us to get away with feeding them, well, almost anything. Some of the more popular choices seem to be nettle leaf, blanched vegetables, bee pollen, not not from the shrimps, from actual like, like buzzing bees, Bruh. and almost any type of fish food, among other things. Caradina cantonensis have a lifespan of one and a half to two years, with males growing to be around one inch in length, and females being slightly larger at one and a half inches. Thick thighs save lives, after all. They enjoy a temperature in the 21 to 26 degrees Celsius range. That's 70 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit for all my fans in Myanmar. This lower temperature requirement means that aquarium heaters are not necessary when keeping bee shrimp, or really any shrimp besides Sulawesi for that matter. But Sulawesi, I mean, but Sulawesi will be a topic of another video. Subscribe to find out. As previously stated, they also require soft, acidic water with a pH below 7. Specialists recommend between 5.5 and 6.5 for optimal breeding and longevity. To mimic this in our aquariums, special buffering soil, a reverse osmosis unit to purify your source water, and a special shrimp buffer called GH Plus is generally required. Shrimpin' ain't easy. Just as I said earlier, many varieties of bee shrimp have been selectively bred for their specific characteristics. This has given us some incredible shrimp to choose from, both incredibly beautiful and in some cases, incredibly expensive. Some of the many variants of the bee shrimp include the crystal black shrimp. This is the most common variety and is also the kind you would find in the wild. Although the white is generally less vibrant to avoid predators, I guess they haven't seen Arnold's strategy to avoid the thermal detection. Almost all of the varieties can be traced back to this colorway. The Crystal Red Shrimp is a red and white version of the Crystal Black that has been specially bred for the aquarium hobby. In 1996, while we were all playing Super Mario 64, Hisayasu Suzuki of Japan had a colony of Crystal Black Shrimp and discovered that they had randomly thrown a red one and later two more. These throws must happen in the wild as well, but due to their brighter colors, they most likely suffer from higher rates of predation. Being curious, he isolated these shrimps, and over time, he and other breeders were able to get consistent shrimp with vibrant red and white stripes. 
Yes, science! The blue bolt shrimp normally have a deep sky blue body, sometimes with a soft gradient into a cloudy white tail. The more blue the shrimp, the higher grade it is considered, with ones that are blue all over being considered extreme. Blue bolts. There are a few variations of blue bolts that can come from breeding together other Caradina types. Blue steel is one, which have the head of a blue bolt, but a harder transition into a strong white body. And a shadow Mazura is another which looks similar, but has a distinctive dark black spot on the top of their head, like a little shrimp hat. The Galaxy Pinto Shrimp are crossbreeds of different shrimp species, all of which have contributed their part to the incredible patterns and intense colors. The Galaxy pattern is the term for the many small bright white markings, and Pinto corresponds to a pied pattern. It has taken many years for breeders to select for these patterns, and the exact mixture is a closely guarded industry secret, like the Krabby Patty formula for shrimp. The list seems almost endless and includes things like Panda, King Kong, and Pinto Shrimp with their various colors and grading scales, like Red King Kong Extremes and Shadow Panda Missouri. Now, it's time for the fun stuff. Reproduction. There are a number of ways to distinguish female Caradina cantonensis from males. By size, as mentioned earlier, depending on the shrimp's colors, you may be able to see a saddle or the ovaries. The shape of the skirt or tail section is another trick. Females will be larger to hold the eggs. The direction the tail fin points, up or down, although this is less accurate. And then there is the little known secret, antenna length. This trick even works on the itty bitty newborns. The little feeler antenna in the front that swing towards the back are the ones I'm talking about. I believe it is called the antella flagellum from the Latin flagrum, meaning to whip back and forth. Kinky fellows. Anyway, males antenna length is about one third their body and females antenna is about two thirds their body. Just pull out your phone, zoom in and voila, it's almost like magic except it's nature. Wow. Being invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone, you don't want these guys with you if you get into a fight. This also means that if the shrimp wants to grow, it needs to shed its exoskeleton in order for its bigger body to have room. This is called molting. I call it creepy. What is happening here? Once reaching sexual maturity, typically around three to four months of age, after molting, the female shrimp releases pheromones into the water to help lead the males to her. During this time, swimming activity can be quite frantic and fun to watch as males search the tank for the females. This is commonly referred to scientifically as the zoomies. After the male deposits the sperm, the female will move the eggs down from her ovaries, or more commonly called the saddle as mentioned earlier, where they will pass over the sperm and be fertilized. The eggs are then carried underneath the female's abdomen and she uses these swimmerettes, or pleiopods, on her backside to maintain a continuous circulation of water. The eggs will hatch in around four weeks to reveal tiny little versions of the adult shrimp. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Once the baby shrimp have hatched, they are extremely vulnerable, as they don't move very much during their first couple days of life. Since shrimp do not breastfeed, it is important to ensure you have enough biofilm growth in your tank in order to provide an adequate food source for the newborn shrimp. You can also supplement the baby shrimp's diet by feeding a powdered food, like bee pollen or Bacter AE, as this diffuses into the water column, reaching every corner of the aquarium so that the babies don't have to go out searching for food. It's like Uber Eats, but for shrimp. Don't eat. Another tip for increasing shrimplet survival is to limit your water changes for the first month or two after they are born. You can half your frequency or possibly even more because in the beginning, they molt incredibly often, multiple times in the first couple of days even. And as we know, when shrimp molt, they are at their most vulnerable. This molting frequency slows down as they mature to eventually be around once a month. This generally coincides with them reaching sexual maturity where the cycle continues. This has been my presentation on Taiwan Bee Shrimp. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, do me a huge favor and press the subscribe button and leave a like. Unlike many larger channels, I am a one-man crew. I do this all by myself, so any and all support is greatly appreciated. Comment below what you think I should talk about next. Shout out to my supporters on Patreon, Brian Dotson, Michael Redman, and Leather Turtle, as well as my YouTube channel members, Daniel Cordon, Tater Salad, Rival, Robert Redman, Jamie A, 3DRC, Jake FWTX and Mitch Bottoma. If you would like me to give you a shout out in future videos, as well as early access to videos and other perks, patron and member links are in the description. I also have links to my Discord fan club 24 seven Twitch stream, my own personal hobby shop and PayPal. If you feel like giving me money for no reason and remember until next time, keep your shrimp hand strong. Bye bye now.